Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Shane Kraus. Today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the Methodology Premium Food Delivery Service. Now, I originally recorded an interview with Julie Nguyen, the co-founder of Methodology. However, somehow in my recording, I lost the ability to record what she was saying. So it was a very one-sided recording. So I decided that since that happened, I am going to give you a summary so that you have something for this week to think about. And I'm going to get Julie back on the podcast so that she can tell us her story in her own words. But today, I'm going to give a little bit of hope, perhaps, to folks out there who are struggling with food allergies and starting to hate food. Because let's face it. When you find that you react to certain foods, you tend to, of course, think, okay, I've got to pull these out of my diet. But at the same time, you're like battling between benefit outweighing the risk. And by that, I mean, if I eat something, how bad am I really going to feel? How much is it really going to affect my body? Well, for a lot of people out there, Food sensitivities are things that can really ruin their life. They can cause issues with respiration, so allergies can cause asthma, nasal congestion, gut issues, skin issues, changes in mental health, so anxiety, depression. Those kind of things can actually be food sensitivities. Now imagine... In the case of many people, I have many patients like this, but also in the case of Julie Nguyen, the co-founder of Go Methodology, she had food sensitivities so intense that she was having depression. She was having issues with their weight. She had acne. She even at one point had a tumor removed. Now, that's pretty intense. And the reason I'm putting out this podcast without having the full interview with her is because I do think that it's a really important subject and information that I'd really like to get out there to help folks from wasting time going from doctor to doctor to doctor to figure out why the pharmaceutical medications for their depression aren't working, why everything for their skin isn't working, all the topicals in the universe aren't taking care of their psoriasis, eczema, or asthma even. And I know that has nothing to do with skin, but asthma is a big one. I just saw a patient today in my office who has asthma and some serious issues with her breathing to the point where she actually has to use her inhaler all day long. Otherwise, she can't survive. And these are because of food sensitivities. So, Let's talk a little bit about food sensitivities and how things develop over time. Because I still think that there's a lot of people out there that are like, how can my food really damage me? How is that even possible? Well, I want to give my story on food sensitivities and give you the background on how things develop for me to give you a sense of possibly if this might be what's going on with you or possibly if this might be going on with someone you know. And of course, you know how I like to mention on the podcast, if this podcast resonates with you or you know it might resonate with someone else you know, by all means, please share it. So because I don't have Julie to talk about her story with food sensitivities, I'm going to talk about mine and Describe how the company methodology is working to really change the lives of folks with food sensitivities. So let me tell you my story. I have struggled with puffy eyes, sinus congestion, and skin rashes for about a year. I 
being the naturopath that I am, always knew that food had an impact with my body. I have a terrible digestive system. Thanks, Dad. And genetically, it's been a struggle my whole life with eating too much gluten, with eating too much dairy. I will have reactions. Now, in the last year, I started to notice that I was becoming more sensitive to alcohol. I was noticing that I would wake up in the morning, my sinuses would be congested, and my eyes would be puffy. And I was going, what the heck? Okay, what am I reacting to? So I had to go back to basics. I had to use a detailed data approach to figure out what food was it that caused my issues. Julie Nguyen did the same thing. In fact, she was a former Wall Street analyst, so she was super detail-oriented. And I found it fun that she and I both were using Excel spreadsheets and old school notebooks in my case to track what was going on with our health and why we were getting puffy eyes, why we would have acne. And in my case, I was also looking at why I had rashes because over the course of the beginning of last year, I started to have rashes around around my armpits, in my trunk area, under my breasts. It was crazy. It was super itchy, and the rashes looked much like a yeast rash. And so what does a yeast rash look like? It looks like round, circular, like flat lesions, so rash plaques. So they'd be red. They'd su- be super itchy, and there were multiple of them. And they were all kind of in areas where I had more sweat. And because I like to work out, they kind of hovered in those areas. So my armpit, under my breast, like I said, and kind of down my trunk, pretty much anywhere where I sweated. And I was thinking to myself, like, okay, if this is a yeast rash, I'll just, you know, work on some topical stuff like tea tree oil and apply it and see what happens. So I went on my way of applying tea tree oil and using jojoba oil with it to try to kill down the yeast. Nothing happened. Keep in mind, I didn't change my diet at the time. Probably wondering, what the heck was I eating? Well, I was on a big gung-ho, <laughs> let's put it almost binge of sorts, in terms of a rotation of stronger, faster, healthier whey protein. And I was rotating with a, another vegan protein, um, Vega Sport. And Orgain was another one that I would rotate in here and there. And those three were on repeat in my diet along with almond milk, along with cucumber, celery, all kinds of lettuce greens, all of those things. And the reason I was doing all these smoothies is because I just got Invisalign for my teeth. And it's really hard to sometimes eat when it's really busy at my office. And it's hard to floss too when you've got you know pieces of lettuce stuck in your teeth or <laughs> pieces of whatever stuck in your teeth, chicken. It's, it's gross. And so I decided that drinking my breakfast and lunch would be easier to get through my workday. So being the genius that I am, I went on that for probably about six months. Yeah. And I was rotating, you know, being true to my rotational background, I was rotating my vegan and whey proteins, but I was getting these rashes. And so as I started to track things, I started to realize that on the days that I had smoothies, which were Monday through Friday, I would wake up with puffier eyes, I would be a little more congested, and my rash would flare. Hmm. It's okay, we've got a connection there. Now, to confirm this, of course, I decided that I had to take a food sensitivity test, which I did do. Now, I'm not going to talk about the results of the food sensitivity test yet because I have to talk a little bit more about what else I did to track my foods. So, Being detail-oriented in this case, I was going after all of my symptoms, like joint pain, back pain, moods. What I found is that peanut butter will give me sharp headaches, extreme nasal congestion, and I get grumpy. Same thing goes for gluten, which I really don't eat a lot of, but, you know, I love pizza. 
oh, I love pizza and I love French bread, especially when it's fresh and even more so when it's like straight out of the oven and it's warm. Oh, put some butter on that. Heaven. Same thing goes with the stinking rustic baguettes at Metropolitan Market here in Tacoma. When they make those fresh and I'm in there and they're warm and I can smell them, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, fresh bread is like my kryptonite. And so I will eat some of that. But I do know that I will have puffy eyes pretty much within minutes of eating it. And I know that my gut is going to cramp and I'm going to either have some serious bloating or have some, let's just say, not so pleasant bowel movements. But boy, do I love fresh, warm bread. Oh, yum. There is nothing quite like it. I'll give up all the chocolate in the world. I'll give up all of that stuff just to have some fresh, warm, deliciousness bread. So speaking of chocolate, I do like chocolate. Chocolate is a very interesting one for me. Chocolate also causes my eyes to puff up, become dark, and I get pretty serious headaches. I have headaches that will cause me to have kaleidoscope vision, as I call it. And it's pretty much where the colors all like kind of move around in my eye. And sometimes I can't see out of one eye because that's all that's happening in that eye. Some people might call these ocular migraines. I actually, if I don't eat chocolate, I don't get those kind of ocular migraines. So I'm pretty much sure that those symptoms are due to my food sensitivity to chocolate. So I've listed off, if you're keeping track, chocolate, I've listed off my protein powders, whey protein, rice protein, pea protein. I also mentioned peanuts, And I mentioned wheat, gluten. What I didn't mention yet is dairy products. Oh, dairy. I grew up one, literally, it's not even true. It's like two blocks. I grew up two freaking blocks away from Wisconsin. (laughs) So I should love dairy, right? Oh, believe me. I, I used to like my fair share of cheese and never milk, but cheese, ice cream. Mmm. I do like me some ice cream. In fact, I probably, out of all the dairy products, I like ice cream more than anything. But it doesn't like me. What do I get? You guessed it, puffy eyes, but I also have some serious digestive issues that happen with dairy. Now, here's a funny story. My family that I married into, the Krauses, they love their cheese. They're from Indiana, but Yeah, you know, we'll give them points because they're close enough to Wisconsin. But they love their cheese. And holy cow, can they eat the cheese. And when we go on vacations or when they come to my house, the family will always have a good smorgasbord of cheese. And I sometimes will partake, but oh my gosh, do I pay the price. So this is where it comes in in terms of benefits outweighing the risk. If I eat cheese, I may or may not poop for a couple days. That's not cool. Then my eyes get puffy, my sinuses get congested. So not cool. Is it worth it when you're on a beach trip in the Cayman Islands with your family to be all puffy? Heck no. I still want to look good in a bikini. So these are things you got to think about. So that's what I look at in terms of my food sensitivities going forward. So... If you've been keeping track, you've got my list of peanuts, whey protein, dairy of any kind, which would qualify as a whey protein item. Um, I talked about gluten. I talked about um, my relationship with ice cream, which is also dairy, and my love for bread, all of which caused some pretty good eye puffiness. So... I decided to see if it was really legit because I like data. I had my data that I collected on myself, but I wanted to see the data in front of me in terms of a food sensitivity test. So, yep, I got myself tested. And sure enough, every single item on the list that I mentioned, except for gluten, showed up as a food sensitivity So what the heck with gluten? 
What's that about? I'm not entirely sure, but what I think probably happened on this food sensitivity test was that I wasn't eating a ton of gluten. And before the test, I actually hadn't had a lot of it. All the other things I had had quite a bit of, but gluten's one of those things that I've kind of kept out of my life most of the time because I knew how crappy I felt with it. Plus the other thing I didn't mention is that gluten can also make me pretty angry and crabby and the mood was not worth it. So I was surprised that that one wasn't on there. My whey protein allergy was pretty severe. Beef was pretty severe, which is interesting. I didn't mention it before, but I noticed in my data that when I eat beef, my digestive system slowed down. I didn't necessarily have any negative side effects, just that I couldn't poop. (laughs) Not good. And yeah, I'm being candid about this, but this is something that I think happens to a lot of people and we don't talk about it enough. I also think that a lot of people don't have that connection between what's happening in their body and the relationship to food. As soon as I pulled out all of my food sensitivities, the whey protein, the pea protein, the rice protein, and I also pulled out rice in general because I noticed it slowed down my gut too, peanuts, another one, and chocolate, that I felt a lot better my rash actually stopped being itchy and it stopped having new spots coming out. The problem I have now is that my skin is hyperpigmented from the rash. So what that means is the rash left its dark mark on my skin and it hasn't gone away for over a year. That sucks. And I hope that that doesn't happen to anybody else out there or if you're having rashes right now and you suspect that you might have a food sensitivity, think about benefits outweighing the risk. I actually am embarrassed to wear a, uh, wear a bikini now because I have all of these marks all over my skin from the rash that came out when I had food sensitivities. Okay, when I had, when I was eating my foods that I was sensitive to. That sucks. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only person out there. So I definitely wanted to air that out today so that folks out there hear this and realize that sometimes the things that you see happening to your body on a small scale, you want to do something about it sooner than later. Don't let it turn into what I let my skin turn into. I just kept thinking that it was a yeast rash and it wasn't a food sensitivity thing. And now my skin is marked up. Now, yes, I do think that there was a yeast component to it because we do have yeast that lives on our skin, but it's pretty clear that as soon as I stopped the foods that were provoking my food sensitivity reactions, all of the flared redness, itchiness went down. And to this day, if I get a hold of any of the items that provoked the rash, I will feel itching starting again. And that's where I go back to benefit outweighing the risk. Do I really want to have my skin all itchy and marked up even further? Heck no, I want this to go away. And I'm working really hard with some herbs that our topical herbs and some topical skin products to try to reduce the excessive hyperpigmentation, so the excessive marking of brown spots on my skin. So there's that. Now, of course, because this podcast was originally a interview with Julie Nguyen, I was talking about her company methodology. Methodology is a premium food delivery service. They specialize in folks with food sensitivities. And I had the opportunity to try out their products for a week. I had meals for a week that were sent to me. And I will tell you, it was amazing to not have to think about every little detail of meal prep so that I, I, I literally had free time, some extra time. 
I also had less stress because I didn't have to meal prep. It was awesome. And I think that's the biggest problem that a lot of folks out there who are struggling with food sensitivities have. It's one, finding the time to meal prep. Two, taking the time to quality, make quality foods and rotate your foods. Because I think a lot of people who have food sensitivities are on repeat eating the same thing. That's a It's a problem because eventually if you keep eating the same thing, you're going to have sensitivities to those foods that you just keep eating over and over and over again. Definitely one of the things you want to do if you suspect that you have food sensitivities is you want to heal up your leaky gut. And I have a link in my podcast notes at thehealthfixpodcast.com with four ways to plug your leaky gut. So go check that out. If you are like, oh my gosh, I need to work on my gut. I'm going to take out these foods that I suspect that I am allergic to. Now, same thing along those same lines with having a meal delivery service. They have a bajillion recipes. I can't remember how many recipes Julie told me, but I think it was like over 500 in terms of rotation. And they have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Now, of course, this comes with the cost but they're using high quality ingredients. She mentioned to me in our interview that it's local farmers, local products. They have two people dedicated to sourcing all of their ingredients and double checking that all of their ingredients are on point. I've never seen a food delivery service that puts that much into making sure that they're creating healthy, quality products for those with food sensitivities. The other cool part about it is that all of the jars are labeled very well with your macros, so fat, protein, carbs, and your portion sizes, which is cool. Because I think for a lot of us with meal delivery services, we don't even know what a portion is in there. We don't know what the macros are of that meal. We don't even know the source of the food. You can track if you, you know, with Julie, she, she knows where everything's coming from. If you really needed to go back and ask about methodologies, sourcing, she knows. Some of these other companies, I don't know. The other cool part is that she, like me, likes to put things in jars. And so they are a near zero waste company, which is pretty cool because they'll deliver everything to you in jars. You can just open up the jar and warm something up on the stove or, you know, if you're short on time, a microwave works. It takes minutes to get a meal on the table. I think for a lot of people with food sensitivities that struggle with meal prep time and having enough time, they're busy, maybe they have families, or maybe the other big thing is that you're struggling just because you don't know what to make or you're not the greatest in the kitchen. Julie has chefs making her food and nutritionists putting together the recipes. It's pretty impressive. And along the lines of zero waste, the jars, you can send them back and they will sterilize them and reuse them for future products. It's pretty darn cool. So in that week that I tried methodology, I was impressed. I was also impressed by the sizes of the portions, meaning that they were a little smaller than I thought. But like Julie was explaining to me and something that, you know, of course, needs to be reminded to all of us over and over again is that when food has higher density of nutrition, when it's high quality products, you don't need as much food to satisfy you. The lower quality junk food, we need more food to satisfy us. It makes sense. Now, she is delivering all of the stuff in the Seattle, Tacoma, Portland, and San Francisco area. So up and down the West Coast. And she's looking to expand in the coming months. But If you are in the West Coast area, you have access to testing out all of her products. It's pretty darn cool. I have done different companies. Um, I'm not going to say all their names, but I've tried a lot of the food prep companies out there. And some of the foods ho-hum. I don't like a lot of the plastic that things come in. That's kind of gross. And it takes some of the meals quite a bit of time to prep them. And then you don't know what the portions are. And that's what I love about methodology, that everything is clear. And it's kind of fun because the products have cute puns for their names. So it's always fun to see what things are going to be named after all. So it's got a lot of bonuses. 
But I think one of the biggest things to think about in terms of when you're struggling with food sensitivities and perhaps maybe you're not the greatest in the kitchen or don't have the time to get creative in the kitchen, you end up eating the same things and you start to hate food. Food doesn't even become joyful anymore. And that's one of the things I don't want people to lose is their joy for food. And methodology definitely brings it back. It makes it exciting. I seriously was so excited that week that I had all these different jars to open and to put foods together. Like, I I meal prep for my husband and I every single Sunday. I do it all the time. But it's just nice to have somebody else to cook for you. It's cool. It's, It's like going out to eat, but like for a whole week because you got a whole box full of a week's worth of stuff. It's, I don't know. It just brought a lot of joy to me, and I enjoyed it a lot. And I think that a lot of people who have food sensitivities might enjoy this as well. Now, the other big thing that I wanted to talk about with food sensitivities and loss of joy for food, or let's just put it this way, possibly creating a negative relationship with food, I think it's really important to mention this. Because I've come out on the podcast before about how... I created myself quite a big eating disorder. One, because of dieting on and off since I was a kid, but also because of trying to figure out food sensitivities and what was causing me to gain weight quickly and then drop it quickly and puff me up and just keeping me from getting the body that I always wanted. And I'll be honest, when you start restricting foods because you're allergic to them, the mind will play tricks on you. Not for everyone, but for a lot of people it does. And that restriction of certain foods leads to a desire to really have them. It's almost this weird, I don't even know how to explain it. You heard me talk about French bread. Warm French bread, OMG. <laughs> That's crack for me right there. I'll eat the whole dang thing. I'm not even gonna lie. I'll probably almost eat a whole pound of butter just to put it on it. And I have to look at that and go, okay, that's not exactly healthy. It's not good for portion control. And I don't know how many of you out there have maybe ate a whole baguette and been like, Oh my God, who took over my body and ate that thing? I didn't do that. That thing's empty. Last time I was conscious, there was a half at least of that baguette left. If this sounds like you, you're not alone. These things happen. And with food sensitivities, sometimes there is a tendency towards having a little bit of a binge disorder when you get a hold of something that you really like. So... What my public service announcement is in this case is to be very aware of what's happening with your mind and your body when you look at food sensitivities. Do I strictly prohibit myself from ever having chocolate? Even though I know it's going to puff my eyes up. And even though I know it might give me an ocular kind of migraine and it might mess with me and give me a headache, you know what? I still give myself some here and there. I just watch how much. I just keep it in check. I've actually discovered that I can have at least an ounce of chocolate, but if I go beyond that, things don't go so well. So for those of you out there that have tendencies towards food issues or eating disorders, Restriction might not be the best option for you. It might be thinking a little bit about portion control and what portions might actually be okay for you to have. In my case, I can't have any whey protein. I have a little bit of it. I start itching and then I freak out because I'm like, okay, this benefit of having the whey protein does not outweigh the risk of me making that rash worse and making any more of those marks on my body worse because I would like to have my clear skin back. Absolutely would love it back. So these are things you have to weigh out. I don't really know that many people that would binge on whey protein, but hey, 
you know what? Any, anything's possible out there. Now, in terms of my love for dairy products, such as ice cream, it's one of those things that I have to think, Do can I live with my gut slowing down and my nose getting puffy, or sorry, my eyes getting puffy and my nose getting congested? Do you have to think about these things? Like, really weigh it down and be like, okay, can I deal with looking puffy tomorrow? Am I going to be okay with that? And how much ice cream can I have? where I won't get all puffed out. I highly recommend you figuring out what is your dosage that you can tolerate. Track that data. That is huge information. Because sometimes with food sensitivities, it's not that you can't have the item at all. It's just how much. For me, any amount of ice cream is a problem. But benefit outweigh the risk. How, you know, if I have a little bit, I will still get puffy. But if I have like a whole cup of ice cream compared to like a half or a quarter cup, it's not going to be as bad. You just got to get to know your body a little bit better. Get in tune, get in touch, see how things play out. I absolutely love peanut butter. Peanut butter at a tablespoon, totally fine peanut butter at four tablespoons. (laughs) I've got mucus I can feel coming down my throat. I can feel my throat getting scratchy. I can feel myself just feeling gross, not feeling good. And I can feel a headache coming on. Why? Because my sinuses are getting congested. These are big deals. It's a sign that your body's reacting to something. But I would not know that I could have at least a tablespoon unless I tried it out. If I just read my food sensitivity results and said, okay, peanut butter is a problem. I'm staying away from it from, for life. And then say I get a hold of it one day and I have a huge binge if I didn't give myself a little bit of it here and there. So for those of you out there that are struggling with food sensitivities and eating disorders, sometimes it's a good idea to step back and look at how much of a dosage of something you can tolerate and looking at benefit outweighs the risk. It'll save you grief in the long run. I had to learn it that way because avoiding everything creates a monster. And when that monster inside you can't hold up that willpower or whatever you want to call it out there, that's when a binge is going to happen. I hate the word willpower, really. I think willpower is BS. You just get stressed to a point where all of a sudden you're like, no holds bars. I'm eating this. I don't care. I'm doing it. I don't care what the outcome is. But I found it goes a lot better when you have just a little bit of something and you find out your dosages. So with that being said, I'm going to close up today's podcast Basically by saying, if you're struggling with food sensitivities, you're starting to hate food, I don't want you to lose your joy for food. I want you to still enjoy and love food. And methodology just might be the answer for you. Yes, it's a premium food delivery service. It's a little bit more costly than some of the other mainstream ones out there. But it saves you time. It saves you stress. It saves you from hating on food. It helps reestablish your zest or joy for food again. And for a lot of people, including myself, it's freaking priceless. So I highly recommend you go check out gomethodology.com. I'm going to get Julie Nguyen back on the podcast here. I will make sure I do not screw up the recording. I have no idea what happened. I apologize for putting out all the promo and not being able to deliver on that. If you want more information on Julie and Go Methodology, like I said, gomethodology.com, but you can also go over to thehealthfixpodcast.com for more information in my show notes. If you know anybody that is suffering with food sensitivities, share this podcast with them. Let them hear me talk about my experience and just hopefully we can help folks to figure out their health. That's my goal, figuring things out, being your best body investigator one day at a time. All right, gang, 
You've survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. You have a great day, whatever you're doing. Hey, everybody, Dr. Janine Kraus here. If you liked what you heard today, then head over to drjkrausnd.com to find my free resources and information to know when I post something new that's juicy that you might want to check out. Plus, head over to where you get your podcasts and like, subscribe, and write a review to help get the word out about me and help others at the same time to find me. It really does help, and I really appreciate all of your reviews.